but it's also actually known behaviour, isn't it? Because we're dealing with a known quantity. Anything that's to do with change and requiring us to actually do something different, that's all unknown. So part of it could actually be quite scary, whereas we know what today is like, and being able to resist what somebody wants us to do in the future and be this victim is far more comfortable than actually choosing to try and find something different to do. The question is, from Thinking Focus. So the question is, why do some people find it easier to play the victim card than to get on board with the change? Hi, I'm Paul from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Rob from Thinking Focus. The question is, from Thinking Focus, a podcast about how our thinking impacts our results and what we can do about it. Oh, well, path of least resistance comes to mind. Also, an easier life comes to mind. So sometimes, although it sounds counterintuitive, if I'm going to play the victim, that means that there's some attention that can come to me and I don't actually have to physically do anything. Yeah, it's not that hard can, to be the victim. Absolutely. Is it? Yeah, it's not a hard life. You can complain, you can moan, um, you can choose not to be engaged with anything. You can remove yourself, you know, because a victim can be a very quiet victim sitting in the corner. And then a victim can also be somebody who's a little bit loud, a little bit, you know, wants to moan about some stuff, is the first person to be the dissenter in the room. But far easier to do that than to actually go oh I've got to do something different tomorrow I've got to change the way that I've always worked uh, I've got to get on board with this that sounds like a hard job let me be a victim instead easier yeah I love I love the idea of, of going victims can't fail right okay yeah, yeah getting on absolutely board means <laughs> you, you, I'm taking a risk I, I may not get this right right okay and then the risk to that is I failed twice yes yeah oh boy I don't want to do that yeah. Whereas a victim, you know, and most of us know how to be a victim, to be fair. Right. Most of us know how to play that part, don't we? Yeah, some more than others. I've met lots of victims in my life. <laughs> but I've been the victim before as well, yes. so I absolutely get that. It's, it's one of those things, and it's interesting because I would say that actually victim behaviour is, is a choice made. In other words, it's a conscious choice. I think people actually decide... I don't want to get on board with this, so I'm going to do this instead. Yes, I think I think... It's almost like you can almost put victims into two groups. Right. So, so for one group, you've got people who are going, this is just a safe option. Okay. The other group, you've got this, this behavior that's known as learned helplessness. Right. I, I don't know how to respond in any other way. Right. This has worked for me in the past. This has worked for me when it's been difficult. Mm. So I'm just going to play out this role of victim that I'm quite good at again. I think that there's maybe even a third category, and maybe that's a category that that, um, covers both of those, but um, it's about going and recruiting. It's about going, I want to go and find another victim to hang around, because then that's going to make my victim behaviour and my victim belonging even better and even yeah. easier. Well, they say misery loves company. Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, there's nothing better than having a good old, you know. Right. Because you don't. I mean, if I'm a victim and I'm moaning to you, the most positive person in the room, I'm going to get really bored of that discussion very quickly because yeah. you're not going to listen to me. Yeah, positive, happy people can be very tiring when you're in victim mode. They're right. Quite draining. So yeah. you go and find other yeah. miserable, other like-minded yeah. people where we can wallow in our own misery. Oh, pity, yeah. <laughs> and 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 I have to say, having like most people at some point in your life been in that position for a period of time it can be quite comforting Mm, it feels nice it feels safe it feels it's cozy isn't it well it's comfortable it's comfortable it's comfortable yeah Yeah, because it's also it's We've talked about ease, ease, easiness about it, but it's also actually known behaviour, isn't it? Because we're dealing with a known quantity. Anything that's to do with change and requiring us to actually do something different, that's all unknown. So part of it could actually be quite scary, whereas we know what today is like, and being able to resist what somebody wants us to do in the future and be this victim is 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 far more comfortable than actually choosing to try and find something different to do. So, okay, Rob, if I'm being a victim, Mm. what kind of things will I see in myself to recognise that I've chosen this victim route? Well, that's an interesting question because I think that some victims don't actually really tune into themselves until they've been doing it for a while. So they don't become aware until they actually hear victim-type behaviour from other people. Right. And or they actually hear themselves with a victim sort of loop, if you like, the second or third time round. So I'm saying the same things, I'm, I'm coming up with the same objections, I'm, yes. I'm coming out with the same reasons why everything won't work yes. without ever 
looking that it might work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and this is a poor description, I guess, but um, the victim sort of mindset or the victim behaviour, um, they get bored. After a little while, they get bored of being a victim. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, well, I, but I keep on hearing myself saying the same thing. Is it actually right? But I, I believe that in change situations in an organisation, that victim mentality will typically be quicker and easier changed by an external factor. So somebody holding a mirror up and going, excuse me, but do you realise what you just said? Excuse me, but do you know the rest of the organisation is moving on? Excuse me, but did you know your best friend is actually doing this and you're not? So, so in a sense, being a victim is a very difficult thing to change for yourself. I think so. Because you can't see that behaviour yeah. and you're in a comfortable place and may not want to choose to change. Yes. I think one of the biggest indicators that I've seen with that is that when, let's say, and let's just choose a number, there's seven or eight victims in a particular work situation, one by one, some of those victims then get the agenda, get on board with the agenda, move away from yeah. their victim. And then all of a sudden, there's only four victims in your pool. Then there's only three victims in your pool. And you go, hey, hang on a second. What's happened to all the victims? And that's a realisation for some people if they're displaying that victim behaviour to go, where's everyone else gone? And then you start looking around and go, oh, they've moved on. What, why? Why have they moved on? How come? What should I be doing? And it's interesting with that description of, sort of seven or eight victims in the pool, there's always one-ish hardcore victim right. who really wants to hang on to the role, doesn't yeah. see any reason to move on. Yeah. And actually, sometimes you see that person is the catalyst for moving other people on because cause sort of the semi-victims, the people who are finding comfort in it but not real great solace, yeah. eventually get wound up by yes. this hardcore victim who's trying to drag everybody down into a, well, they get to a, a point very of, unhappy yeah, place. They get to a point of being uncomfortable. Yes. Right? They sort of go, well, hang on a second. I think, I've, I think I'm feeling a bit like a victim. They wouldn't describe it like that. But that's hardcore. What this person over here, the saboteur in the room, is describing, that's hardcore. That's not yeah. me. Oh, hang on a second. Maybe I should look at my own behaviour and maybe I should be doing something different. And I've heard language in the past like, well, yeah, 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 but, but, but not everything's terrible. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and it's that moment of going, oh no, it isn't. Not everything's terrible. No, one or two things have changed. Yeah. The world is still turning and moving on, and so that brings to mind for me a question. So how can we help these people then? So well, that's what I was going to say. So right. If I'm if I'm like you say, holding the mirror up. Right. How do I hold the mirror up? I think uh, part of that is um, behaviour and language. Um, you, help people to understand that if they were to continue doing what they're doing, what the consequences or implications of that might be. Yeah. So in other words, so I get you're unhappy or feeling like a victim, whatever that description is, how long would you like to do that for? And if you continue to do that, what's likely to happen as a result of you doing that? So from a behaviour point of view, holding the mirror can help people to examine what it is they're doing. And I'm assuming for some people, it is just the holding the mirror up act that helps them to move on. Yes. I, well, I, the, the thing about that is you have to have the mirror held up, whether you're holding it yourself or whether somebody else is holding it, to be able to make the recognition about what you look like, sound like at the time. Yes, because most of that behaviour is done outside of our own conscious awareness. Yeah. We're just acting in a way we've always acted yeah. or we're getting a reaction to the way we're acting that suits us for our purpose right now yeah. somebody else needs to actually reflect and give us some mm. you know, view of that behaviour in a bigger picture sure absolutely I mean conversely the mirror might not be a work mirror conversely it might be partner at home who gets fed up with the diatribe of victim language and victim mentality and yeah. then calls their partner out and goes, excuse me but don't bring your work grumpiness your, home exactly yes. you know what, what's going on here sort it out so how do I tell the difference between a somebody who needs a, a gentle push a mm. little bit of a mm. mirror held up and, and some help yeah between them and the hardcore saboteur victim. Well, this, this is the language bit. So I made reference before to behaviour and language is actually to ask some questions of the victim to find out really whether those are deeply held beliefs or whether that person's just having a bit of a moan. So is this something that they feel that they can't move on from or is it something they just want to get off their chest? Yeah, because, because that actually um, ability to let things off steam, uh, let some steam off, yeah. it's quite an important part of this process. Of course, of course. And they may not necessarily be a victim. They just may be getting some frustrations out. Yeah, yeah. 
Absolutely. Which some people do internally and some people do very externally. Yeah, yeah. and some people will do that on behalf of others, well-meaning, well-intentioned. I'm going to be the mouthpiece of uh, that work, uh, you know, that work pool over there or these colleagues over here. And you, very easy language to spot because you go, well, do you know what? Everyone's saying da 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 Really? Who's everyone? Yeah. You know, is this something that you feel and you're just externalizing that? Um, and how real is it? How true is it? You know, give me, you know, not give me some names, but of all of the people that you're representing these views, how many? So Where are they? You don't get a notepad out. And take <laughs> at this point. Although I have seen that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if you've got a really hardcore person, somebody who really is embedded into this role of victim, how right. would you move them on? I think part of that is you. Um, you need to be consistent um, and able to help everybody that's affected by this change and make that help obvious. So in other words, you're helping people to move forward, move on through what we all recognise as as, a, as the transition of change, moving through the various stages of, of, of that change and how it affects you psychologically. But you need to actually make those messages clear to the whole group, including the victims. Right. So the victim has a choice to engage with the programme and move forward or not. But whilst they're not, whilst they're choosing not to, you're going to help other people. The subtlety around that is that we can then describe to those people who are coming out with victim behaviour and language to go, recognise you're making a choice here to stay where you are, but I'm helping everybody else. Yes. You're welcome to join in as well as you can, if you can. We're moving on. We're moving on. Come when you're ready. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, part of that then would be that the victim will come when they're ready, or the victim will decide, actually, there's no hiding places left here. I don't belong here. I'm going. And they self-manage themselves out of that situation. Right. You've got a couple of choices. You either get on board with it, you accept it for what it is, or you leave it. Yeah. Yeah. And what we're helping the victims to come up with is what those choices are. So, thank you for that, Rob. In, in summary, we, we're kind of saying that, that people's reaction as a victim is is done because it's a comforting place to be for yes. a while yeah. and actually the best way of moving people through that is about reflecting back to them what their behavior means what they're doing and how that's working for them yes and the likely impact or consequence that might have thank you very much okay great to find out how thinking focus can unlock the potential within your organization go to www.thinkingfocus.com where you'll discover more about the work we do helping our clients increase productivity and enable change. Hi, this is Paul from Thinking Focus. I just wanted to let you know that this podcast is part of a series on the myths that often occur during times of organisational change. You can find other podcasts in the series and some special resources related to these myths at thinkingfocus.com forward slash myths.